Good morning, everyone. It is just the nicest day this morning on my step in Devon. This is Emma from Way to Fitness. It's nine o'clock and I think it's Tuesday. I only know it's Tuesday because it was Monday yesterday. <laughs> Who's there? Who's joining me on my step this morning? Give me a wave. Hi, Dawn. Good to see you there. Fantastic. The sky is blue. The birds are singing. The sun is out. It is gorgeous. In Devon, we had a really slight frost. Good morning, Amy. Good morning, Sue. But um, not a crisp frost, but there was a bit of frost when I left this morning at about half six. Yeah, it's beautiful. It's such a beautiful day. Let me see if I can just flick my camera around and you can see how green everywhere is looking. Look at that. Can you see any girls? I'm not sure where my girls are this morning. It's all nice and green, kind of nice and lush. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's nice. Right, there we go. Good morning. Okay, so today is day two of our Ditch the Love Handles. Um, I've decided on a personal note that I'm going to make summer of 2020 my summer. A summer that I remember for all the right reasons. Good morning, Karen. Um, it is so easy when life is busy and frantic and work and family life just take over and we just can't spend any time thinking about ourselves and working on ourselves. So I've personally decided the summer of 2020 is Project Emma. Good morning, Margaret. And good morning, Alison. So I've devised um, a 10-day um, Ditch the Love Handles little program that I'm doing for myself and that I'm going to be carrying on. And obviously, all Way to Fitness um, members and anyone who's interested can join me. So yesterday uh, we talked about, um, about, about goal setting, didn't we, and doing measurements. Okay, so I hope by now you might have either done your measurements, taken some photographs, uh, just documented where you're starting. It might just be this pair of jeans does not fit. Okay, and you might, oh look, there's two inches of gap between the buttons. You need to have some sort of measure uh, to start so that you know you can track your progress. Um, yep, Dawn's got leg bumps and tums, to, that's tonight, that's brilliant. Um, so you need to know where you're starting from, but you also need to know where you're heading. <laughs> so I'm hoping that you've got some sort of goal that you want to have achieved within this 10 days. And I want you to have a goal that you can achieve in four weeks and three months, okay? I am already planning what I'm wearing at Christmas. Now that might sound absolutely crazy as it's only the, it's May, I have no idea of the date, but it's sometime in May. Um, so it's the 15th, which is an important date in our family, is Friday, because it's Amy's birthday. So if I'm tracking back, it's what, like the 12th maybe today, something like that. Um, so um, I want you to have a, a plan, a goal for what you want to achieve in a week's time, in a month's time, in three months time and at Christmas time, okay? Because the more you visualize and believe that you're going to achieve those goals, the more likely it is to happen. Now, today's subject, we're talking about carbs. What's your take on carbs? Goodies, baddies, what do you reckon? Carbs, carbohydrates. Give me a few words about what you think about carbs. I'm listening. So hopefully you're tapping away something that you think how do you feel about carbs? Like them? Love them? Tell me. I want to know. And then I'll tell you what I think. Okay, so the question is carbs. Okay, you know, it's not a simple answer. Uh, that, that's the answer. It's not simple. Anyone going to give me a bit of feedback? What do you reckon about carbs? Love them? Loathe them? Important? Not important? Karen's just finished. Wow! Okay, Karen's just finished yesterday's cardio ampule stretch. By nine, I'm impressed. Karen, I am well impressed. Two classes by nine o'clock. Well done. Okay, so Sue says some carbs are good. Good morning, Annie. We're talking carbs this morning. Carbohydrates. Okay, Sue is right. Some carbs are good. Definitely, without a doubt, some carbs are good. Now, I've been doing a bit of homework this morning. Now, if you actually want to know lots of detail, Karen likes them too much. Okay, me too. If you want to read about uh, carbohydrates in detail, go to the NHS website. It's called NHS Choices. 
and um, it's really good it's a really good factual website so you want to move away from all this faddy stuff uh, well that I personally promote um, as a nurse I want to promote um, evidence based stuff that's going to be good for your health um, so NHS Choices website is very good on carbs and I'm going to give you a very potted um, information about carbohydrates now Alison says Graham needs them to give him energy do you know what Alison it's not just Graham every single person in the land needs them for energy yes they're very very necessary for energy Amy says carbs are way too easy to eat good but not filling in the right way totally absolutely carbs are so easy to eat and drink aha I know I slipped in the drink bit because it's true absolutely and they're not filling in the right way. You're right, they are not filling in the right way. Yeah, okay. And Alison says, I've used some of my exercise this morning. Yeah, fine, you use them as fuel. So, why do we need carbohydrates? So carbohydrates are needed for energy and they're also needed for um, certain nutrients like iron, vitamin B, uh, the vitamin B mineral, vitamin Bs, and for calcium. Okay, so those are important nutrients that you get from carbohydrates. Broadly speaking, they can be split into sugars, starch, and fiber. Okay, so starch and fiber are quite intertwined, aren't they? Um, so when, you, when I say carbohydrates, some of you might have just thought, ooh, potatoes, or ooh, bread. Some of you might have thought, ooh, wine, or biscuits. You would have been right on all counts, okay? <laughs> um, so let's talk sugars first. So when you go to the NHS Choices website, they talk about free sugars, they talk about other sugars. And obviously, um, from a waistline and a tooth decay point of view and in a prevention of type 2 diabetes, we want to limit the type of free sugars we eat. And free sugars are things like cakes, biscuits, chocolate, sweets. Um, but also things like honey and marmalade and jam. They've got a lot of sugar in them, okay? Um, free sugars are in things like fruit, and vegetables and milk. Uh, they count towards your total sugar intake, but they're much less of an issue. Okay, because of the quantities we eat them in, um, it is so easy um, if you're not careful. If you're a sugary, sweety sort of person, you can munch your way through a bag of wine gums and you look at the amount of sugar you've just eaten. I've done it myself. Um, jelly baby I remember when I was training for a half marathon I think I was the only person that put on weight training for a half marathon because I used to reward myself with bags of jelly babies I thought I'd just run 10 miles I can eat a bag of jelly babies but you see how much sugar is just you know anyone who has jelly babies for hypos which are blood um, low blood sugar if you've got type 1 diabetes you know you only have a couple and it brings your blood sugar up you don't eat the whole bag Emma anyway we live and learn don't we so the sugar, as you know, in all sorts of things like cakes, biscuits, sweets and chocolates. So the other type of carbohydrates are starches. So starchy carbohydrates are found in things like bread, rice, pasta, spaghetti. And they are so important for your digestive health. Lots and lots of pe people say to me that the most common thing that they have problems with is constipation. Yep, it's really uncomfortable going to the loo. And lots of us need to eat more fiber. So, so when you're eating carbohydrates, choose whole grain varieties, stuff with um, fiber in them. So we're talking granary or wholemeal bread. We're talking brown rice, brown pasta, um, vegetables with skins on, so like jacket potatoes with their skins on, rather than white potatoes that you've peeled and put the best bit, the fiber, into the recycling. I could do a wallpaper on my phone that says, just don't eat the whole bag. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely, Amy, don't eat the whole bag. Um, good morning, Denise. So you need to be choosing whole grain varieties of those things we talked about. Remember that brown bread is just coloured white bread with they've just added caramel to make it look brown. So that there's no extra fibre in brown bread. It needs to be wholemeal or granary. Um, hello, Jenny. So what else have I got on my little list? Okay. So carbohydrates give us energy, but obviously if we're having a resting quiet day, we're going to require less, aren't we? So it's fine. Good morning, Jenny and Fiona. It's absolutely fine to have um, some carbohydrates in your day, in your meal choices. You just don't want to have too much. Watch your portion sizes and choose um, 
whole grain or wholemeal varieties. Um, I'm a great um, promoter of being aware of your portion sizes because back along I would probably eat the right types of food but way too much. My quantities were way too big. So I moved to things called portion pots. They're just like plastic scoops. And, you know, I scoop my pasta, I scoop my muesli. Uh, what else? Uh, we've got uh, we've got a few scoops in our kitchen, actually. So we've got a yellow one that I do my muesli with. Um, a green one is actually um, pasta. Um, we've got two sets because Casper, the, the, our lovely Spaniel, he's kind of we always overfeed him and he does he's on the verge of chunky that's all I'm saying and the vet said you need to be feeding this dog less so he has a green scoop (laughs) a green portion pot he has that twice a day and that's the right amount of dog food for him so it helps Casper's portion control as much as ours the blue scoop (laughs) you can use for oats to make porridge basically the portion pots come with a little card and the card tells you how much energy is in each scoop. So that can be very useful if you can't be bothered to weigh stuff out. But having, having um, an awareness of your portion sizes is very important when it comes to carbs. But with any food, we've got to keep it varied and interesting. And it may well be if you have got um, inches to lose off your waistline, you might, um, if you're like me and your love of sugar is tremendous or your lo- love of crisps or chips is and, and pizzas and white carbs is tremendous, you might need to cut them back a bit. Look at your portion sizes, eat off a medium plate. The only thing you don't have to cut back on is vegetables. Um, potatoes aren't... Um, Potatoes are carbs. They're not vegetables. They're carbohydrates. Okay. So um, eat eat them in moderation. And some people like sweet potatoes. I don't. Um, Although I will eat them if they're mashed in with other vegetables and used as a topping on a a, a cottage pie type thing. I'll eat them then, but on their own. Uh, The great thing is we're all individuals. You eat what you like. That's important. Um, Just be aware of the... um, Be aware of the quantities... And um, sweet potato is lo- has a lower glycemic index, which means it peaks your blood sugar more slowly than white carbs, white potato. So just kind of be aware of that. Okay, so we talked a little bit about fiber when we talked about um, starchy things. I am an absolute lover of pulses. So I don't eat meat. So um, lots of our meals are based around vegetables and also pulses. Now, I forgot to pick up, I got my jar of red lentils out, left it on my desk and thought I must remember to say, here's my new best friend. But of course it's in the kitchen and I'm on the step. Red lentils um, are those very small orange lentils that until about five years ago, they were only ever used for gluing and sticking in craft sessions with my kids. Actually, no, that's not true. My kids are 21 and 22 now. So obviously they haven't done that for 15 years. But I never, ever cooked with red lentils. I just used to use them in craft activities with my children. They're great for gluing and sticking because they stick really well because they're very light. But actually now I cook with them. I put them in all my soups, all my stews, all my casseroles. We'll have a tablespoon. So I'm wriggling because there's something in my back. It's not very comfortable. Um, All my soups, stews and casseroles, curries, everything I cook that's savoury will have a tablespoon or more of red lentils in it. They add fibre, um, they are so good for your digestive health and they are really filling. So if you haven't used red lentils recently, you need to. Um, if you're not um, an experienced eater of pulses, I would just say eat them, um, add them to your diet gradually because they can give you wind and they could make you feel a bit bloated if you went from nothing to three times a day. All right. So um, just eat them, uh, add them slowly and um, Things like, I don't like hummus. I know lots of people love hummus. I don't like hummus. That's made from chickpeas, so that's good for you. Um, But eat it in moderation because often it's used, they've added quite a lot of fat to it. Um, But I don't think you have to add lots of fat. If you make your own, I've got members who make their own um, hummus. It's garlic and chickpeas and stuff. And some people absolutely love it. What's great, we're all different. Um, So today I want you to think about what carbs... Uh, So we've talked about food. Ah, we haven't talked about booze yet. We are talking about alcohol a different day, but we need to comment about it today, really, because there's a lot of sugar in stuff like wine and cider and beer, (laughs) isn't there? Now, um, it's biscuits for me, 
but it might be wine for you. It, we're all different and that's wonderful that we're all different, but do have a think about the carbs you regularly drink. It might be sugary drinks. It might be, you know, kind of like, I don't know, lemonade -y type stuff, um, apple juice, fruit juices. It could be beer, cider, wine, whatever. But obviously there's a certain amount of sugar and all that too. And it depends on the quantities you drink. If you have a small one, that's absolutely fine. You drink two pints, obviously a lot more sugar in that. So just today, I want you to think about the carbs you are eating and drinking. Is there any way you can tweak them? How can you make them just a little bit more healthy for you? So we're talking portion sizes. We're talking about, um, are they whole meal? Um, I found in Tesco's last week, you can get whole meal couscous. So that's good. And that recipe we put in the newsletter this week of Kian, who's my son, um, he found this recipe I think it was a he mixed two recipes because that's what we do in our house it was a BBC good food recipe for couscous um, and we put that in the newsletter so if you haven't made it yet do it's absolutely delicious and we bought wholemeal couscous that we could use in that recipe it's got vegetables in it it's got really nice tasty spices in it too oh Lorna that's brilliant Lorna says my hummus I made yesterday was so garlicky it was definitely good to keep to keep everyone away. <laughs> Social distancing, I bet, Lana. I don't know. I don't really like cold garlicky things. I like hot garlicky things, but I don't like cold garlicky things, which is why I've never really got into hummus. But I know lots of people love it. So that's what I'd like you to do today. Look at what you're eating and drinking from a carb point of view. Um, if you're not sure what to do next, go to NHS Choices website click it you know choose carbs read about the different types of carbohydrates and um, I don't think we want to make this too complicated um, you need carbohydrates for energy but lots of us eat too many free sugars and the free sugars are the things like cakes biscuits sweets and also um, some of us eat white carbs uh, which are not so great for your waistline that's what will stack up those love handles and they're things that you will need to cut back on if you're currently eating too much if you're unsure, if you want any advice, drop me a message and I can reply. So today is Tuesday, as we've said. It's keep moving for me, seated exercise at 10.30. And we've got legs, bums and tums at 6.30 tonight. So I really hope you're going to be able to join me for that. We've got a hog session on Thursday at half past 11. If you want to do that, it's just an hour session. You do need a hog um, and that's uh, five pounds. And I'm sending out the Zoom invitations this afternoon. So do let me know if you want to do that hog session. And I wish you the beautifulest, bestest Tuesday ever. Um, I hope you've got nice weather. I don't know where you are. Lots of my way to fitness members are in Devon, uh, but I know lots of other members aren't. So, so keep in touch, enjoy your day and make summer 2020 your summer. Good morning, Lou. I've just finished, but you can watch it on the catch up. <laughs> Bye everyone.